All right, so today we're going to talk about angles of elevation and depression. So, angles of elevation or angles of depression deal with reference points. So we always have to have a reference point. And on Earth, even though the Earth isn't flat, we reference the horizon, right? So we say this is tall or it's above sea level, below sea level. It's north, south, east, west, all those different references that we have. So when we talk in geometry about angles, because angles aren't normally positive or negative, we talk about it, whether they are elevating or depressing from where they started. So anytime we have an angle of elevation is looking up from the horizontal. Anytime we have an angle of depression is looking down from the horizontal and it's from the vertex. So when we look at angle one here, if the bird, the seagull up here, it has a viewpoint that can see the top of the hot air balloon, but also can look down at the hot air balloon Earth, which actually if you ride a hot air balloon, you are a ballooner, which I think is pretty funny. So what is angle one? Would this be an angle of elevation or an angle of depression? Strickland? Depression. Depression because from the horizontal, it is pointing down. So angle one would be, and we can abbreviate as just DEP. And you can think of that, think of it as it goes deeper or goes down, obviously. Caleb, what about angle two? Uh, two, right. two would be uh, from the observer's elevation. viewpoint. Well, well, from the observer's viewpoint, it would be an elevation. Elevation, right? Because from the vertex, that's what you got to pay attention to. We've got a horizontal, where's my other ray go? It elevates, goes up, so this is an angle of elevation. Uh, Mr. Anthony, is this a lot more like practical math or like real world situations? I mean, all of it's practical. Okay, but I mean, like, I mean, like, we'll, we'll, a lot of it's probably going to be like referencing real world. Yeah, and then we use the trig and the special triangle knowledge in order to solve everything else. Cool. Yeah. So it's going to tie it all up into a nice, neat package. But, but like, but would you use any of the, like, elevation? Yeah, so if you become like an engineer, Say you're designing a new roadway, like hard road up there. They completely change the elevation on a lot of those pass-throughs from, like, if you go look at Stanburn, the pass-through of Stanburn, where it used to meet hard road, was feet higher. Literally, they dropped the road by feet. So surveyors go out, and they've got their laser level things. You've ever seen those guys with the tripods, and then there's always another guy with, like, a stick and a thing on it, and it's, you always think, like, man, what do those guys get paid for? They're just, like, standing around. <coughs> but they actually are doing a ton with... What was the pitch? What was the reference point that we had marked? A lot of times there are reference points based off something like a, a telephone pole would have a reference point like nailed into it that would say this is elevation zero. Reference that with your laser level and then we're going to drop the road down and you know they go from there. So they would say it's an angle of depression or an angle of elevation. And as they do runoff, everything that gets built has to compensate for water. So, like, as I was riding my bike to the football game last night, the bridge that goes across 315, there's drains on one side of it, but the other side of it, the elevation is enough that the water runs itself off. Yeah. Yeah. 30 to 0. Yeah. Shut out. Mm, I'll let you guys figure that out. What about angle 3? Yeah, they both be Cards won. I... Uh, high school. So this is the really weird thing. Apparently, I know, so am I. Apparently in middle school, cards almost always beat the wolves. Apparently in high school, wolves almost always beat the cards. I don't understand it. I'm still getting used to this district. My district had one high school, so we had no like in-district rivalry. Now, we did have rivalry with the other high school like in the county, but yeah, you guys have no under... You have, uh, yeah, look at Franklin County and how many high schools you have in your county. My county had three. So, yeah, go look up how many high schools are in Franklin County if you're curious. It's ridiculous. Angle. No, they're like us. They send back to the other schools. Angle three. From the observer's viewpoint down to the base of whatever this is, some mountain, I think. Caleb? Depression and angle four, if we had an observer at the base of the mountain, Rhea, it would be elevation. This is why we are doing two lessons today, 
this stuff is all pretty straightforward. So wait, are we just going to be basically naming the... And then utilize, and then like apply. Oh, so it's like saying... That yeah, so then like right. if given an angle of elevation. So if you've ever um, driven on 270, the loop right up here by Sawmill, you've probably seen the giant windmill that is by that car dealership. That's not actually that big of a windmill. The ones that are out at like the wind farms are huge. So if we are at a wind farm, which when we went to Chicago, if you went there, we drive past the one giant wind farm there in Illinois. Um, we have an observer who is looking up to the top of the, um, oh crap, I can't think of the propeller essentially, but it's not a propeller, that's the wrong word. And he has an angle of elevation of 56.5 degrees. His distance away from the tower is 53 feet, and he is five and a half feet tall, or his eyes at least are five and a half feet up. We want to figure out how tall is this wind tower. So how can we apply the mathematics that we've learned over this past week to figure out the height of this tower? Trig. Harmon? Trig! Oh. Woo! Trig. How do we use trig? Ooh. So I look what I'm trying to solve and what I have. So we have, she already said it. Yeah, we want to use tangent, right? Because I have the opposite and the adjacent. So I'm going to use tangent. And I'm going to set up that tangent of my angle of elevation, 56.5, will equal the opposite side over the adjacent. And this is still easy to solve because how the ratio is set up, I can really just cross multiply if you solve for the x. Okay. I was going to say, would it matter that he's five and a half feet up? Yes. I was say so, he's not so notice I said to solve for the x, oh, okay. not to solve for the height. Okay. So when I do 53 times the tangent of 56.5, what do I get? You guys got to practice calculating these. 78.6. Now we are not done though. That tells me this value, but I want the entire height. Now if I know that this is the angle of elevation, what do I know about this line even if the picture doesn't quite look like it? Brian? It's the horizontal. So you're right, I'm just I just say it differently than you do. So it then, when it tr traces over to the tower, tells me what do I need to do. If it's perfectly horizontal, yeah. let's say I go outside and I do this with a flagpole. Yeah. We're actually going to go do this with a flagpole eventually. Yeah. And I look at the flagpole, and then I look up. What do I know about where I look at the flagpole? It's straight, it's straight which means that if I'm 5.5 feet, my eyeballs are 5.5 feet. That point where I meet is 5.5 feet above. So to find the actual height, I'm going to add 5.5 feet and find out that the whole thing combined is... What do you get, Ethan? 80... What do you mean, never mind? I didn't know you had an issue. What? Oh, would somebody tell me? No offense, he trusts Calvin a lot. I kept getting eight, and I was like, all right, I'm doing something. So wait, what did you get? What did you get? 80.07. 80 yeah. Careful when you type those in. Seriously, hitting the wrong calculator button will uh, ruin your day. I forgot the point five on the angle. Yeah, well, there you go. 85.57 feet tall, which is still not that high. Like these, the real wind turbines are pretty giant. That's what I was trying to think of. The top part's the turbine, or the turbine. Yeah. Because this was the, hey, hold up, we got a question. The X we solved for was only this amount of the tower because my eyeballs are not at the bottom of the tower. 
Now, if I re like if I wanted to only be able to do the trig, what I would have to do is like lay on the ground and be like, well, how high up is and that's really annoying. So instead, you say, how high are my eyes? Add that to whatever I get for my trig. Because where I hit the, the tower part is 5.5 feet up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, my eyeballs would be higher than that. My eyeballs are probably about 6 feet. Yeah. Also, what is the point of using elevation when you get something like taller? Just because then, why can't you just do it like a tower? Because to have an angle of elevation or depression, it has to be referenced to the perfect horizontal. Because any just angle... I don't know if I'm looking like from the bottom of the flagpole to the top of the flagpole. Like it has to be a right angle to do trig. So angles of elevation and depression, you know there's a right angle because the horizontal. Does that make sense? So, wait, okay. I'm confused. Like why would you want to be the point of knowing angle of elevation is always Just to reference, that's a really, really simple problem to get you started. Just so that if you were reading somebody's plan, let's say, so back when I did landscaping, talk about this a lot. Let's say I was brand new on the job and I'm reading a plan and they say standing from our reference point, because we always have a reference point where we put our laser level, they say we want a three degree angle. Well, if my patio slopes this way versus slopes this way, that's a huge difference because if I slope it this way away from the house, water runs where it needs to. If I slope it this way towards the house, you're going to get water in your basement. So angle of depression versus angle of elevation makes a big difference. So if that person wasn't there to talk to me, I'd need to know what they were talking about. Off the horizon, angle of elevation, come away from the house. Make the high point at the house. So that sort of application. When? So in our calculator, we essentially look at this as a proportion, and I cross multiply to solve for the trig. So I get 1 times x equals 53 times that tangent of... Hey, some of us are trying to have class over here. I know, that's why it's funny, because I'm always super loud. You're talking about me? All right, let's move on to, to number two, or the god. Hmm? Well, hang on to it for a second. So your eye level, let's say I'm the person in this problem now, your eye level is six feet above the ground. You are looking at a climber up a cliff, which this could be me, 32 degrees above. And actually, they, especially if you go to the military, which I love the military still uses the same technology they've been using, if you have a real military compass, there is a, like, you can flip it open and tweak it around. You can actually figure out angle measures of, like, what you're looking at based off a mirror and the reflection, that sort of stuff. So if I had a compass, not like a mathematical compass, but an actual compass, I could figure out where that climber is. So I could figure out this angle of elevation of 32 degrees. I know that I'm a 1,000 feet away from him or, or her, if you know. If, but most of the time, if you're climbing a rock face, you're probably a guy because you're dumb. Um, <laughs> I mean, when you climb rock faces, there's a large potential for danger. How do we calculate how high they are? Well, one thing that you should immediately think of is they are going to be an extra six feet high off of whatever I saw for my unknown value. Yeah. The way you wrote it was like 750. Yeah, sorry. This is like... The, the distance from ground to the start of your line of sight is a six foot difference. So then we need to solve for x. Now we've gotten really lucky so far with how our trig gets set up. Um, and we'll get lucky again if we set it up the same. So I actually am gonna, uh, we'll get to the hard one. The, the thing I'm trying to get to is where if we had tangent, let's say, of 32. Again here, we're going to get x over 1,000, and we can just cross multiply because this is really like over 1. But what if we had, and this is wrong, 1,000 over x? Right? 
Yeah, then think about swapping these places, and you really can just do a thousand divided by the tangent. But that's not how this sets up because we're lucky and we get given the adjacent. So when we set this up properly, we get that equal to x over a thousand. Michelle, you said that you already had the x. Six hundred twenty-four point eight seven. Can anyone verify this? Yeah, that's what I thought. That's my x value. Then we have to add the extra six feet that we are up. My horizontal line of sight is six feet higher, so we get must label it. Any questions? Uh, sure. Yeah. 6.31, something like that. Now this actually uh, ended up making me look super nerdy when I was in Boy Scouts because we would go to scout competitions where we would have these survival skills and we'd be trying to figure out how to like solve a problem. And one time we did, well we could traverse this, This uh, they said there's a canyon. It was really like a, a you know, gentle sloped thing. Yeah. But so they're like, you have to traverse this canyon or you have to go around. If you go around, it's X amount of time. So my buddy and I quickly did the trig and said, we're going to cut down this tree. Like we didn't actually, but we said we'd cut down that tree, lay it across here and we'd span the gap. And they said, the tree doesn't fit. And we said, yes, it does. And they were just trying to be like, oh, the tree doesn't fit. And we're like, no, we have the math to prove it. So we wow. looked super nerd. And you like, were, you were that kid. In yeah. That I was like the nerdy Boy Scout. <laughs> But I love like camping and all those sorts of things, so it fits well because the better you are at math, the better your problem solving skills. Right. Not all Boy Scouts are nerds. Some of us are just like really adventurous. Okay, judgmental eyes. Try number three. We. This is a like Captain Cap, Captain. This is a Captain Sully type situation. We've got an airplane flying. It's modern day control system has faulted out. It needs to figure out when it needs to start its descent. So it needs to know when it reaches a certain distance from the airport. Now what it knows is right now there's currently a three degree angle of uh, depression between it and the airport. They know that they are flying at a height of 2,714 feet because their altimeter still works. They know that the airport is 1,007 feet above sea level because your altimeter works based off pressure and references sea level. So what you need to figure out is currently what is their distance away from the airport? Currently, what is their distance from the airport? Uh, so th this is just giving us the, the reference point of which angle we're using. Really, like I was saying earlier, it more comes into play when you get into an application of like you're doing a project and they reference an angle and you need to know whether the angle goes up or the angle goes down. So let's say we're taking like a bridge across a river and they say this bridge is going to have an angle of three degrees as it approaches the river. Well, is that an angle of three degrees dip or is that an angle of three degrees rise? So is it Wait, can you assume depression? that it's a right triangle? Well, if it's, well an angle of, if it's an angle of depression, we know it references the horizontal. Okay. That's, so that's the other reason why we use the name, is then you know it's a right angle. Like a right angle. Wait, Wait, Does that make sense? I don't know. So it's not that important until you get to the application. Ah, uh, like in your life, depending on what career field you go into. Oh, but not like in your class. Now, like, so this, I could just tell you there's three degrees. But by telling you it's an angle of depression, and they say angle of descent, but we know it references the perfect horizontal, as opposed to an angle of three degrees that could be this, and there's no horizontal there. So that's an angle of three degrees, but I don't know that it's a right angle. This angle of three degrees, I know that I make a right triangle. And based off what we know about our parallel lines, even though they give me this three degrees, I could use this three degrees if I felt like it, which is actually kind of the easy, like 
you're either looking at this right triangle at the bottom or this right triangle at the top. They're both the same. Okay. Um, ah, I love this. Hopefully you will never again forget your conversion ratio for miles. In a mile, there are five tomatoes. Five tomatoes. There are five tomatoes in a mile. So 5,280 feet equal one mile. Five tomatoes. I never knew that until about two years ago. A student told me. It blew my mind. Five to mate o. Five tomato. If it helps you remember. If not, forget it. But if it helps you remember, it helps you remember. Who can walk me through this? You think your process is flawless, Michelle? Yeah, the difference. Yeah, the difference is uh, 1707. Yeah, and so uh, I did uh, sign, but I did like, I did the, uh, I did the opposite one, like, not the sign, but I did the sign. So, up to the Triangle so were you solving for the hypotenuse or for the? I was solving for the yeah, we're we're gonna solve both. So you were solving for the hypotenuse. So you're solving the raw distance right here, right? So yeah. So you use sine. So what did you set up for sine? Did you use sine of three degrees? Uh, yes. So you did sine of three. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So regardless of whether I use this three degrees or this three degrees, they're the same. So my opposite is 1707, and my hypotenuse, we don't know it, so I'm just going to make it H. We then, this is one of those more difficult situations, to solve for H, this becomes 1707 divided by the sine of 3. And what do you get when you solve that? So approximately 6.2. But that's the distance between the plane and the airport. If we want to talk about horizontal distance, we then use a different trig function to solve. Wait. Why is it miles? Because they asked us to do it in miles. So we get our answer in feet. Yeah. So that answer, as um, Michelle just told us, was I'm just verifying your math just for my own confidence, was 32,616 feet. Then you divide that by five tomatoes, or 5,280, and you get 6.17, which rounds to 6.2. Now, if I want to solve for this distance from the airport, which trig function would I use there? Megan? Tangent, because I know the opposite. is 1,707, and I know that the adjacent, yeah, be careful with what you're actually looking for and what you know. Yep. This is solving for this distance, which should be less. Should be, right? Not by a lot, but it should be less because remember the hypotenuse is always the longest. So when I trade places and I do the division, it's now 1707 divided by tangent 3. Why are we finding the round? Just to practice this. And this is, I don't actually like how this asks the question. It says, in the air center mile, how far from the runway is the airplane? So that I infer as the uh, hypotenuse distance. But if we talk about how far the plane is from the airport, just like ground distance, this actually in miles for the adjacent side there comes out to be 6.16 6 
eight eight whatever. Whereas this was six point one seven something. So they're very very close. But that is slightly less. So when we're talking miles, we're going to get very close answers. But it was really a difference of 571. So 571 compared to uh, 616. Uh, it was really 45 feet of difference between the hypotenuse and the long leg. It was only a difference of 45 feet, which is pretty small when you think about we're talking about a plane. Well, and that's because the height is so small compared to the other. Yeah. Normally, planes fly at about 30,000 feet, so approximately five-ish miles high. Which actually, if that scares you, that shouldn't, because that just means the plane can coast for a very, very long time. Planes falling out of the sky, it, like that doesn't happen. How planes are designed, even if everything cuts off, they can coast for a very long time. If you ever want to see something insanely impressive, go look up the... Um, air traffic controller, like their computer, what they see, the amount of traffic coming in and out of an airport is insane. Like, especially Columbus, we have an insanely busy airport and it's not big enough for our city. So they're trying to expand it. Carmen? My uncle and my godfather, they bought a plane together. Nice. Another one of their friends. They bought it like a big large one. And it's like a Cessna, like a smaller one. Yeah, it's a four-seater. Oh, yeah. But you can yeah. Anyways, but it'll be, um, they're buying a six-seater now, which nice. is actually like a big thing. Yeah. It's scary. Because is it like, propeller? Um, yeah. But it, like, um, you know, like the car and stuff. And they, um, my grandparents live on a farm, and there's a runway to their, like, there's a big strip of grass in okay. the field, and my uncle, like, Does he have his own airport, essentially? Like his own hangar? But he has a hangar at the... They live in Illinois. Illinois. Okay, never mind. I was about to... There's a... Exactly like what you just described. There's one of those on the way home to Coshocton for me. So I drive past but, like an yeah, airstrip in the middle of a field. And so like... He like basically runs his like... Yeah, I've seen... You, you showed us a video of your grandparents' farm, right? You drove yeah, the tractor and stuff? My, yeah, your grandparents' farm is way mind. bigger than what I'm talking about, though. Yeah. An airplane pilot sights a life raft at a 26 degree angle of depression. So we're going to draw a picture. We've got our plane up here. We've got our life raft down here. 26 degree angle of depression. So this tells me 26 degrees. The airplane's altitude is 3 kilometers. And since it's a life raft, we assume that it is on sea level. We sure hope so. What is the airplane's horizontal distance from the raft? Because they would need to know that to radio, probably to a helicopter, where to go find these people. Because you don't care about the direct distance, then you care about the horizontal distance to figure out what their uh, coordinates are, longitude, latitude, like their GPS coordinates. So, yeah. So if the plane, are you talking about this specific problem or like in the world, would you have enough info? No, like in the problem, what do you use the angle for? Ah, so I know that sea level should be horizontal and angle of depression is from the horizontal. So based off alternate interiors, I know that this is also 26 degrees. And from there, I know one angle, one side, I can do the trick. Calvin? Or you can just use the other side, and not have to worry about it. Yeah, I agree. I just always like the triangle that actually gets drawn. So you're totally right. I just, I always end up doing this. Because this doesn't really matter, and like, because that's not the horizontal, like, that's the same distance, but I'm really talking about if the plane is here and the life raft is here, how far between them. I, in my brain, I like that better. I, so there's no right wrong. What trig do I set up here? 
Strawberry, we haven't really talked today, um, do you know? Yeah, um, I thought we would solve the tangent. Tangent, which is going to use opposite over adjacent. So, how's my fraction get set up? So if I showed out all of the work, so this would be 1D equals, um, or sorry, this would be D times tangent of 26 equals 3, and then i got to get D by itself, so I really have to divide by tangent of 26. And that's how I get to the point of my opposite side divided. I can always convert later. Because it's metric, it's really easy to convert any time. Yeah, because like if I should have converted earlier, it doesn't matter because it's only a three decimal place change. Like, because it's multiplication. Sure. Yeah, you're just going to get bigger numbers as opposed to smaller numbers. So, do you have the answer, Carmen? Yeah. What is it? Let's check this without any tech. Okay. If this was a 30, 60, because this is 26, so actually this is drawn probably more acute than it actually is. If it was 30, 60, how would the short side, long side compare? Or what compares how? Making you remember those 30, 60, 90 rules. Flip back in your notes if you need to. What is it? Sorry, say it like the what? Yeah, root three. What I mean, you can just say root three. You literally can. So this makes sense because it should be slightly over double with the angle comparisons that we had. So always, if you're questioning yourself, just kind of look at it from a different lens. Now, we then get into using this trig to be able to calculate the area of any regular polygon. Because in a regular polygon, all I really have is a bunch of congruent triangles. So if two figures are congruent, their angles are equal, that's a pretty obvious proof. But the area of your polygon, this I think you've seen before. What? Oh, I should have covered it up and seen if you guys would remember. What's the apothem actually mean? This weird word, apothem. Because the area of this polygon is one half the apothem times the perimeter. Calvin? Mm -hmm. So, it's essentially like an altitude, right? Wait, is that the core formula for it? For any polygon, yep. Regular. Any regular polygon, yes. So, this apothem is the distance from your center point out to your edge, but it has to be perpendicular. So, this always works, which is crazy, because I could have a 1,000 gone and apply this. So, this is how we would set up a problem like this. Now, it's not completely done, but if you are given a pentagon here, we can find the interior angle measure, because we know the entire interior would be 360. I know that that gets broken up among five portions, 360 divided by 5 tells me each interior angle is 72. Now the problem with calculating that is that 72 is really the entire thing, and to make a right triangle, we really have to cut that in half, 
drop the opossum. I don't know why they drop the opossum at the weird one, but if you want to draw it yourself, I would just drop it straight down and give yourself a little label that that's going to be the opossum. So to find that unknown angle, which they label as angle two, we just cut our angle one in half. So angle two is going to be 36. And then since I know angle two, how do I find angle three? Yeah, it's triangle angle sum. I know we sum to 180. So since I already have the 90 degrees, I know 36 needs a complement with it. We need to complement 36. It's kind of feeling down today. What's 36's complement? What is it? 54, right? So measure of angle 3 would be 54. Then what is 1 piece of information they could give me that would kind of snowball and let me solve the whole thing. The side length. Yeah, so if I knew this side length, say they gave me that this was some length z, I could solve everything from there because I could chop that in half and I would know this length, which would then let me solve for the apothem length using the trig. Hold on. If I had Instead of the side length, if I had the apothem length, can I solve for the side length? Yeah, just using the trig. So whether I have the side length or the apothem length, I can solve all of the other pieces, parts of the triangle. Or the, well, really polygon, but the first thing we look at is the triangle. Caitlin. Kind of a quick question though. Okay. You know, if you know like the side of like the short side of the right triangle, right? The one that's the this area. Yeah. Assume that it's also half because the apothem has to be the bisector. So yes. Yep. So and I'm gonna give you two homework sheets. I'm not gonna be here Monday. I started saying this earlier, but I uh, did not finish my thought. I'm at the WEC. So my thought is I will uh, have the sub go over all the homework answers for you guys just so you can check right wrong and see if you have any issues. And um I'm not totally certain exactly what we do. I don't want to give you guys the mastery yet, obviously, but we're at the end of chapter seven. So I'll probably give you guys some sort of review Wait, something. Yeah. yeah, that's it. This chapter, this is it. Sometime next week. I need to look at the plan and see what we're doing. One of the days next week, we're doing a safety drill, doing the Alice yeah. stuff. So, so I got to, after staff meeting today, I should be able to schedule out all of next week. No. Like, we've passed grade deadline. Like, grade or a assignment deadline for 7th grade, at least it was Wednesday. Yeah, we cut off. So At the right, sorry, I what? We have, oh, yeah, grade deadline is Friday. So 14th is grade deadline. We cut off um, assignments a week and a half out so that they can get, like, they have the rest of this week and the whole next week to turn stuff in. At the right, a portion of a regular octagon has a radii. Now, wait a minute. An octagon can have a radii? I thought circles had radii. Yeah. It's also a unit. Right? Mm, no, that's radian. Oh, this is just another name for the apothem. Another name for the apothem. There we go, Straveler. <laughs> like an echo in a small cave. Ah, so, hold up, this is the danger. The radius, and I, I think I really said that statement, I was getting excited and I said that incorrectly. The radius is if there was a circle, right? If, I know, hold on, because I said it wrong, I really, this, if there was a circle, crap, I can't draw this very well. I didn't mean to say a problem. Okay, okay. There's really only half a shape here anyways. This radii, sorry, my brain gets tripped up sometimes, is your hypotenuse. Hypothesis? Yeah, I know. It's 
It's Friday, you know. Not had enough it's coffee, apparently. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna leave it at that. So, your radii. Hold up. Your radii is like the hypotenuse, whereas the apothem is the long leg. Well, let, most of the time it's long. In the very rare case, it could maybe be the short, but I don't even know if that can ever happen. No, it can't because regular, then all the sides would get bigger and the apothem Yeah, because then the hypotenuse couldn't do what it needs. Yeah. So that has to be the long leg. Maybe the hypothesis could. So if we use our hypothesis in the trig function, Rhea. It is the vertical, like perpendicular distance from the center point to the edge. So whereas, and I like, I can apologize 19 times, but when I get ahead of myself, I say things wrong. The radii is like the apothem. It comes off that center point, but it goes to the furthest point possible, which would be like on the circle, if we inscribed a circle or circumscribed. <laughs> so that would be like your hypothesis. So that would be like your hypotenuse. And she let him out a minute early, which is kind of annoying that they left and did dumb stuff. So, Mr. Hudson, that was hilarious. We, we, we will review, we will review the rest. Is that I'm glad that you guys are going to AO. We'll review the rest of 7-5. I don't know if I'll make, okay, here, let me actually get your preference. Would you rather me make a chalk talk to teach through the rest of 7-5 and you work through that on Monday, or would you rather us talk about the rest of this together, like, live? Okay, I'll figure out what you guys can do Monday, then. I might just give you guys time on I have not made my sub plans. I still have to make my decision. Yeah. Yeah, but I might make a chalk talk for chapter eight because the start of the chapter is easier than the end of a chapter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sorry. So. Hey guys, snacks up. See you back with another legit food review. Oh my God, you're all so funny. Let's just do this. Come get one of each of these. Oh my God, I'm dying of laughter. Mr. Hudson, you might want to turn off the recording. I know.